If you're looking for tips on how to safely and effectively rinse your nose with saline, then this video is for you. I'm Dr. Allen, a fellowship trained sinus surgeon in Houston and the Woodlands, Texas. These instructions are useful for my patients as well as anyone looking to improve their nasal rinsing technique. First off, why rinse? After nasal surgery, rinses are essential to clear debris and keep your nose healing optimally. If you haven't had recent nose surgery, rinses are still helpful because they've been shown to reduce inflammation in the nose caused by allergies and chronic sinusitis. Everything you breathe in, including dust, pollen, mold, and any airborne pollution or debris gets trapped in the mucus lining the inside of your nose. If swelling obstructs or slows the flow of mucus, these irritants have even longer to cause trouble in your nose. Rinses help clear those irritants, allowing your mucosal membranes to stay calmer over time. This results in less swelling, less bothersome nasal drainage, and a healthier nose that breathes better. Now, how do you rinse safely? First, always use distilled water when possible. This can be obtained at most grocery stores and pharmacies by the gallon. Bottled water may suffice while traveling, but never rinse with water from a sink or a tap, even if filtered, without boiling for three to five minutes to destroy any of the germs and then cooling before using. Most patients find that gently warming the distilled water in the microwave for a few seconds makes rinsing more comfortable. Second, use pre-mixed nasal rinse packets to get the salt and pH balance right so that rinsing doesn't burn. You can try mixing salt and baking soda by finding recipes online, but these pre-mixed packets avoid any problems caused by getting the concentrations wrong. Third, use a bottle that allows you to rinse while leaning forward with your nose aimed downward. This position cleans the nose the best, but there are exceptions that I'll discuss in a minute. I recommend using the Neomed 240 milliliter squeeze bottle found in sinus rinse kits at most pharmacies. Fourth, keep your rinse bottle clean by washing it out with a bottle brush and soap and water at least once a week and consider running it through the dishwasher on a regular basis. Replace the rinse bottle about every six months as bacteria forming biofilms can be resistant to these cleaning methods and worsen over time. There are powered rinsing devices available and some patients prefer to use these over the traditional squeeze bottle. In my experience, the suction powered devices such as Navage are useful primarily when patients struggle with rinses entering their ears and throat when attempting the squeeze bottles. These power devices may, however, limit the use of certain head positions that might be needed to deliver medications into the sinuses or clean the nose properly after sinus surgery. Now let's discuss rinsing technique. As mentioned, rinsing while leaning forward with your nose aimed at the sink will clean the nose the best in most patients. If you haven't had sinus surgery, this position quickly fills up one side of your nose and crosses to exit through the opposite side. If you squeeze gently and slowly, the saline should trickle through without much resistance and should not feel like it enters your throat or your ears. Flow through the opposite side may, however, be restricted if your nose is extremely congested or obstructed by swelling, septal deviation, or nasal polyps. If you have had traditional sinus surgery with windows into your sinuses, you may notice that significantly more volume enters your nose before reaching the opposite side, as the sinuses are also filling up with saline. This makes nasal rinsing an ideal delivery method for getting medications into the sinuses after surgery, which is commonly used to control challenging cases of chronic sinusitis. After sinus surgery, leaning forward until your forehead is in a hanging position ensures that rinses clean and deliver medications all the way up to the frontal sinuses in your forehead. Your surgeon may also ask you to rinse at least some of the time with your head more upright or even looking up towards the ceiling. This position allows rinse to enter the sphenoid sinuses, which are often not rinsed well while leaning forward. Finally, let's address adding medications to your rinses. Again, these medications are generally used to control more significant inflammation of the nose and nasal allergy symptoms in place of nasal sprays and to treat persisting chronic sinusitis following adequate sinus surgery. The most commonly added medication is a steroid, which might include mometazone, budesonide, fluticasone, and others. Antihistamines such as azelastine and diphenhydramine can also be added for added control of allergy symptoms such as sneezing and drainage. Antibiotics should only be added to rinses for a limited period of time when a challenging infection is noted in patients after sinus surgery. Antibiotic rinses will not treat sinus infections adequately prior to creating surgical windows into the sinuses, and I'll explain more in a moment. Antibiotics used might include mupirocin, levofloxacin, ciprofloxacin, vancomycin, tobramycin, genomycin, and many other options. Your ENT surgeon may obtain a culture from inside of your nose to help decide which antibiotic to use. Your surgeon may also monitor your condition with scopes in the clinic in order to determine when to stop adding those antibiotics to the rinse. 
Other less commonly used medications for rinsing include antifungals such as itraconazole, nystatin, and amphotericin B, and mucolytics such as acetylcysteine, which have less proven benefits but may be useful in specific conditions. Regardless of which medications are added to your saline rinses, don't forget to add pre-mixed nasal rinse packets or it will likely give you an unpleasant burning sensation in your nose. On a side note, it's important to understand when a medicated or non-medicated rinse might actually help a sinus problem. Rinsing is undeniably beneficial in every patient with rhinitis or sinusitis as cleaning the nose will improve symptoms and ensure that sinuses are not impacted by swelling in areas of the nose adjacent to where the sinuses naturally drain. However, studies have shown that a 4 mm opening is required for any nasal rinse to enter the sinuses reliably. Natural sinus openings average 1 mm or 2 mm at best, and in the presence of sinusitis are often swollen and completely obstructed. Rinses cannot reliably enter unoperated sinuses, particularly in the setting of sinusitis based on the size of their natural openings. Only oral medications such as antibiotic and steroid pills can reliably treat sinusitis before endoscopic sinus surgery or in the setting of sinus obstruction. This also applies to balloon sinuplasty, which is commonly used to dilate sinuses in a less invasive fashion compared to traditional sinus surgery. Balloon dilation rarely, if ever, results in 4 mm or greater sinus openings long term. There will be occasional exceptions, particularly when a patient has favorable anatomy and steroid eluting stents are used during the procedure to keep those openings as large as possible while healing. However, this represents a small minority of patients undergoing balloon sinuplasty. In most cases, dilated openings contract and narrow while healing and steroid eluting stents are expensive and rarely covered by insurance when placed during office procedures. With this in mind, it is important for those using medicated rinses to realize that only traditional endoscopic sinus surgery resulting in larger sinus openings, at least four millimeters in diameter, will reliably allow ongoing treatment of persisting chronic sinusitis using topical medications in rinses. This key difference allows moderate to severe sinusitis sufferers to avoid taking as many oral medications which carry much more risk of serious side effects long term compared to the same types of medications applied topically in sinus rinses. Hopefully these tips help you get the most out of rinsing your nose. Rinses help manage allergies and sinus problems and they make an excellent delivery system for topical medications when needed. Proper rinsing techniques and rinsing safely with distilled water in a clean bottle help ensure great results for all the effort involved with rinsing. I'm Dr. Allen with My Houston Surgeons, and if you would like help treating your nasal and sinus problems, please schedule a visit at premiersinus.com or call us at 713-791-0700. Thanks for watching.